Respect for life. More than 20 years ago, when mankind first saw this picture of a lonely planet, people wondered how this new view of the Earth would change the way they feel about it. One thing that's happened is that when something like the Exxon Valdez oil spill happens, as it did in Alaska, people understand that that kind of disaster is like an injury to a living planet. But what does the Exxon Valdez have to do with personal ethics? This is Larry Wade. He's the captain of the oil tanker Glacier Bay that runs the same route to Alaska that the Exxon Valdez did. We called him on a ship to see how the fourth principle, respect for life, enters into his thinking. After all, he's a person in a job whose decisions can affect the future of the world. The Exxon Valdez proved that. Even uh, with a ship the size of the Glacier Bay, uh, uh, the ships severely move around in, in heavy weather. Uh, if you're running in a 30 to 40 to 50 foot sea, and even with a ship this size, the ship is severely moving up and down and possibly rolling heavily, and you are taking an awful lot of water across the deck. Because of the dangerous environment he's in, and the men who depend on him, and the millions of gallons of oil in his ship, Captain Wade has to be ethically fit. At any moment, something could happen that will force him to make critical decisions. When you have to think about uh, what you would do in a situation, uh, there's a lot of things that go through your mind, and, and probably uh, the high point in, in my thinking would be the safety of my crew, followed immediately by the safety of my ship. And thirdly, maybe by uh, the en environmental aspects of it, and uh, lastly would be the, the uh, interruption of the trade or, or the movement of the oil to the to the oil company man ship environment those are his priorities you may or may not agree with them but captain wade has taken the time to think about and form his own personal ethical code that other captain the captain of the exxon valdez joseph hazelwood he faced his own personal test of ethical fitness he had to decide which was more correct, being on the bridge when his ship was in hazardous waters or being in his cabin because he was entitled to some time off and some time to relax? Did he make the right decision? Probably that question has been discussed more by the people at sea than probably by any other uh, segment of the population in the world. And, uh, and as seamen, we all seem to come to the conclusion that we, we feel that the captain was, was wrong in leaving the bridge at the time he did. Not legally wrong, but wrong in the sense that it was prudent seamanship to stay there at that time, and he didn't do it. Perhaps ethical fitness means being ready to make your own decisions whether or not there's a law that tells you what you should or shouldn't do. Because, face it, most personal ethical decisions have very little to do with the law. Ethically, he should have been on the bridge Legally, he was doing the thing that, uh, that was right. It was no problem. But just because uh, it, legally it says you can't do something, it doesn't mean that that's what you should do. Things have changed. Your personal ethical decisions will have more of an effect on the future of the world than your ancestors' decisions ever did. A hundred years ago, a ship captain couldn't cause so much environmental havoc by running his ship aground. A hundred years ago, a couple of scientists working alone at night couldn't unleash anything like the radioactive fallout of Chernobyl. But today, life is much more complex, so much more challenging, and the future is going to be even more demanding.